Now, something that's important to understand about Active Directory is that Active Directory um, is a database. And, and, of course, like a lot of other databases out there, Active Directory has these things called partitions. Um, partitions are used to replicate from one domain controller to the other. But the interesting thing about that is you have to consider not just having multiple domain controllers inside the, the same domain, like I've got my, my diagram here, but also if I had multiple domains. So when you start branching out to having you know, multiple child domains and multiple trees and, and discussing kind of how replication is going to occur uh, across those multiple domain controllers when they're spread out like that. Um, so I want to draw a little something out for you now just kind of help you visualize and understand the, the concept of the different um, partitions that we have in a Microsoft domain. So uh, here we are um, with another drawing and I am going to let's say that this is your domain controller right here. So we got domain controller and that domain controller is um, has got a database on it. Of course that database is Active Directory. So let me just make this big cylinder here and this cylinder is going to represent our uh, Active Directory database, okay? Um, okay, in the uh, Active Directory database, let's see, Active Directory DB, uh, the name of that database is actually in a file called ntds.dit, okay? So that's actually where your database is stored, it's stored inside of a file called uh, ntds.dit on your domain controller. So the Active Directory database, uh, originally many years ago when Windows 2000 came out, there was really only um, about three real partitions that made up Active Directory, okay? Um, and it was these first three here, and I'll tell you what this fourth one is in just a moment, okay? So the first one is a partition called the config partition, also known as the configuration partition, all right? Now, the configuration partition... The thing to understand about it is that this partition will replicate to every single domain controller in the entire forest. I don't care if you've got a single domain or you've got, you've got 50 domains. A copy of this information replicates forest wide. So it contains info about how the forest is laid out, all right, is, uh, we'll say, configured, all right. Uh, and it replicates forest wide. So every domain controller in the forest gets a copy of this partition. All right. Which also means that you don't want to somehow mess that up because you're going to mess it up for the entire forest. All right. Uh, the next partition is called the schema partition. And the schema partition uh, is actually a partition that, oops is a partition that makes up all of the uh, object types and attributes for the entire forest. Okay, so what exactly is that? Well, every time Active Directory goes to create something, if you're going to create a user account or a group or an organizational unit, I don't care what it is, Active Directory uh, communicates with this partition known as the schema, and that's how it knows how to build that object. So when I go to create a user, it's got to go to the schema to know how to build it. It's sort of like made up of all the templates. I always use the analogy of it's like imagine this big massive box in your head and in that box says the word schema on the front of it and then inside that box is a bunch of rolled up uh, blueprints. Kind of like the type of uh, blueprints that you might build a house with or something. Okay, <clears throat> And each one of those blueprints is labeled after an Active Directory object like user account, group account, group policy object, organizational unit. And so when you go to create something, Active Directory goes and it pulls out that blueprint and it knows how to build that object. So the schema is made up of all the different objects and the attributes that go with those objects on how to build objects. So it doesn't store any information about the object. It doesn't store like what the user's name is or password or any of that. It just knows how to build the object. Okay, that's what the, uh, the schema partition contains. All right, so it contains all um, object templates and attributes for building objects. This also replicates forest wide. So every single domain controller in the forest is gonna have a replica copy of the schema. 
okay? The third partition is called the domain partition, and the domain partition is unique for every domain. So every domain gets their own copy of this partition, uh, and, and they can add their own objects to it. So this is where all of your user accounts, your passwords, your groups, your organiza organizational units are all stored here, and they're unique for the domain that you're... Uh, you're dealing with. So if you look back here, um, every single domain in this forest has their own unique par uh, domain partition. Okay, It's not a shared partition across the forest. They've each got their own unique portion okay, of this partition. All right, And so this is where all of your different object information is, uh, is stored. So contains all domain related um, objects, object information for just this domain. Replicates only to DCs in this domain. All right, so it contains all domain-related object information for just this domain, and it replicates only to DCs in this domain. So, all right, it does not replicate across the forest like some of these other, um, other ones do. Okay. All right, so that's important. Now, guys, when uh, this came out uh, in the year 2000, that was it. There was only three partitions that existed. Microsoft, um, when Server 2003 Active Directory came out, they released the ability to create um, a fourth partition called an application partition. Now, an ac application partition, this is a custom partition okay, that you can create and you can choose what's going to get stored in there, okay? So you get to choose what's going to get stored inside this partition. Uh, so if your company was doing, you know, developing applications and these applications had created special types of objects in Active Directory and you only wanted certain domain controllers to have a copy of these objects, that's what this is for. It, to be honest with you, it's not really used that often nowadays. It was something I think Microsoft really thought would take off. It didn't really, though. Uh, it's not used by a lot, of, um, a lot of people out there, though it could be used if you develop custom uh, ob objects that are going to be stored in Active Directory and you wanted to, to pick and choose which DCs are going to uh, replicate this information. So um, this is a custom... Partition, if I could spell, custom partition that you create and choose which DCs get a copy of the information. Okay, so this is a custom partition that you create and choose which DCs get a copy of the information. Now, I will tell you that uh, Active Directory nowadays does come with a couple of these that are built in. Uh, one is called the Forest DNS Zone um, Custom Partition. The other is called the Domain DNS Zone Custom Partition. And that gets specifically into DNS and how you want DNS to replicate, which I'm not getting into just at this very moment. But essentially what it means is that um, if, we're, uh, if Active Directory is hosting its own DNS, which most people do that, you can choose to replicate your entire DNS information across the forest or just a specific domain. And so there's actually a couple of these that, that uh, tie to Active Directory involving DNS. But ultimately, those are your three main partitions right there. This one is a custom one that you can create. There is a couple of built-in ones that Microsoft uh, has. They don't really advertise this a whole lot, but, but they involve DNS. Now, the last thing that I would like to mention is that you have this thing called the Global Catalog. The Global Catalog is a special job you can assign to a domain controller and when you do that it will replicate it will replicate a subset of all the objects in every domain's domain partition okay i'm going to have to lower the font on that just a little bit so it'll all fit in there but let me say that again it replicates a subset of all the objects in every domain, uh, every domain's domain partition. That's this partition 
right here. Okay, that's this guy. Now, the global catalog, the purpose of it is so that um, our different computers can locate objects in those different domains. So if I come over here, it makes it to where uh, I could be in, say, the Scotland domain, and I could look up a user account that exists in Australia. The global catalog is what makes that possible. It does not replicate all the attributes about every object. It just represents a subset of those objects so that um, the different machines in your domain in Forest can find each other. This doesn't really do a whole lot if you've only got a single domain because your domain controller knows everybody anyway. But if you spread out to multiple domains, uh, like I had in that other diagram, that's where the global catalog is really going to come into play. All right? All right. So hopefully that gives you guys a good understanding now of the different uh, partitions. This is, again, kind of the behind-the-scenes stuff of hacking, happening in Active Directory, but it, hopefully it helps you understand now uh, what these different partitions are used for. This is John Christopher. I hope you enjoyed that video, and I want you to know that I'm trying really hard to grow this channel, so I hope you'll give me a like and a subscribe. Also, if you'll check the description in this video, I've got a link for you that can show you how you can get access to all my different courses. I have lots of different Microsoft certification courses that'll help you pass your exam. All right, thanks a lot for watching the video, and I hope to see you again. <laughs>